so this is a small showcase of how uh, glowing UI is being made, how that works, fully dynamic UI. So I have a custom example in my own game. I need to compile this quickly. So you can see in this example that glowing UI, not faked, fully dynamic, works pretty well. So you can see the lantern rotating and the uh, extinguishing arrow rotating. And as they do, the effect is being updated and it creates this glowing effect, which is pretty nice. Look at this noise arrow. It's really, really bright and glowing. You can just, you can see, I can make it even more obvious how this basically glows. This is glowing UI. And um, you can see by the numbers on the right that this technique, at least uh, on lower resolutions, seems to be fairly cheap, but I wouldn't say cheap. I just adjusted my settings so that it um, is cheap, but it it needs it needs adjustment, maybe some optimization. So let's look at it in a very clean environment. So I made a new 4.27 project. I stripped the lightning uh, the light away and changed um, the light setting a bit, so you can see the UI better. Then. I made a UI and I just put random things on my UI. I didn't care. I just put random stuff on my UI. I made a box for UI that doesn't glow. That's on the right here. This stuff is not going to glow. And then I made all the stuff that should glow. I put it inside this box, which is UI glow. All the stuff containing in this box is going to glow. That includes these two images here. So how does it look in game? As you can see, the images are glowing. The text is glowing, except for the text on the right. That is not glowing. So how did I do it? So firstly, we just start with the basics. I made a UI, a HUD element. I added it to the camera, very simple. And um, on my on the top of my UI for this box that is supposed to glow, I made a retainer box. You can just type in here, retainer. And this box is very useful. So my settings for this retainer box is retain, render, these are default, no invalidation, render on face, Face is zero and face count is two. Face count two, this is very important. Face count two means that this retainer box is not updated every frame, every tick. This box is only updated here and then. This is very important for performance because if you do this every frame, you will very quickly get into a traffic jam with a renderer for the Slate UI. Very important. I then have a texture parameter that I called UI snapshot and a effect material, which I called glow UI texture. We are going to look at that now. So this is the entire material. What you need to do first is you are going to create a new object a texture object, this thing. Then you are going to right click it and convert it to a parameter. This is really important. You take a texture object, right click it, convert to parameter. This is now a parameter texture object. And you call that like you call the texture parameter on the retainer box, UI snapshot, UI snapshot. I did this here. Then in the next step, we took a uh, general spiral blur. This is general spiral blur. I then 
click this small magnify box, tick, and we can just, um, you just open this and then you look here and you do save as. This is what I did. I made my own. I made my own. Let's remove this and let's go to the one I created. UI spiral blue texture. And I'm going to show what I changed in the material, in the shader code. The first thing you are going to do is change output type to float 4. Then you are going to scroll up where the code bit is and in the first line it will say float 3. You are going to change this to a float 4. This is very important. You save, close this, replace your spiral blue with your own UI spiral blue and attach it to the texture object. Then put some um, control variables onto it, some constants. And you can use my settings, but beware you need to tweak these. It can, on bigger screen resolutions, it will eat away your performance. Be very careful. Then let's focus on um, opacity first. I took the texture from my texture object and fed it into a texture sample. Text. You just hold down the T key on your keyboard, T, and then you click. You take this, this is empty, and you just connect it to your texture object. That's all you need to do. Then I take the alpha from the HUD. So basically this retainer takes a, s a snapshot, a screenshot from your HUD and feeds it into a parameter, in this, in, in this moment a texture object parameter. So it has alpha, it does have alpha. We take this original alpha and feed it with the now blurred texture the float4 texture, which has component float4, 4 stands for alpha. 4 is alpha in this case. We make component mask, oh, wrong, component mask, tick all, tick all these away until we have A. This will split A from this float4 alpha and then we are going to do a add and we are adding the blurred alpha on top of the original alpha and that we feed into the opacity. Then next for the uh, final color we are going to take the blurred result multiply it by 2. This is just making it stronger. Uh, so that it glows more. It's, uh, it's important. You will not. You need to uh, enhance the effect a bit. Then I'm going to. I break everything out except for alpha because without that I cannot desaturate um, the uh, glow effect, which you probably need to do. As um, this is how you can control the saturation of the blur blurred uh, glow effect. And then on the back side, I'm putting it all back together, except for the alpha that doesn't need saturation. Then I'm feeding this on top. I'm feeding this on top of the new, uh, of the old original hut, which has the same colors in the same place. And this has, has the blurred glowy colors, which are desaturated. So I put them on top and I feed this into final color. I use translucency blend mode and user interface. That's, that's all. Then I compile it and save it. This is all fine. You don't need to change anything else for this. No, no other code is involved. And then you can see that it glows. 
everything inside the glow box is now glowing. So let's um, let's just change some effects around. Let's let's use for instance seven and use four. Let's let's really make this obvious. Let's make this really obvious. This effect. There. It doesn't look properly nice on the scale, but this is this is for showcase. We could also, for fun, make this really intense. Really, it li will look stupid, but damn, look at this. <laughs> it's completely overboard. <laughs> and we can look at the... Oh, oh I, c I don't have the console here. I have to do it here. So start FPS and start unit. So, as you can see, this is working quite nicely. I don't know what is going on on the right side. It seems like the color is leaking from left to right, but that doesn't concern us right now. That should, that should be ignored. Let's do it to two. That's how I do it in my game. Bang! This looks, this looks quite nice actually. I mean the colors are completely messed up. Yes. D you don't need to say to, to tell me that the colors are completely messed up, but we use this insane, insane power module here. Let's let's just use a use eight. It should al <laughs> already look better. Oh, well, it's, it's still quite extreme. But it works. It works. So this works for everything that is inside the retainer box. I would advise you to just make an overlay. You should always do that. You should always do that. You should always make an make an overlay on top of everything before you make UI. Make an, an uh, make a overlay that is really useful. And then you can take the oh, you can take this entire container and just drag and drop it into the retainer. That's the easiest way to do it. And then you compile it. And everything that is not in the uh, glow container is in the non-glow container. Which is just the same overlay which with the same size but in another folder. And that UI part doesn't glow. Really simple. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I could teach you something new. Until the next time. <laughs>